Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to the seventh session of the Ramadan Dua's analysis. We are now deep into Dua Iftita, so let's continue. We are now going to start looking at section two of Dua Iftita. And section two covers three main areas. Salawat on the Prophet, blessings on the Ma'asumin alayhi salam, and the role of the twelfth Imam. And today we're going to look a little bit more deeper at the Salawat of the Prophet. So if you have your book, open it up. And the first question is, read lines 129 to 133. Underline the adjectives that the Imam is using to describe the Holy Prophet. How many can you find? So if we look at those lines, we'll just quickly read through them. Mm -hmm. Oh Allah, send your blessings on Muhammad, your servant, your messenger your trustee, your chosen one, your beloved, the best of your creation and the preserver of your secrets and the preserver of your messages. Now, one thing we were saying about this, Fatima, isn't it? That the very first quality that is mentioned, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin abdika wa rasulik. And abd, here it's translated as servant or slave is another translation. And usually, in, in today's day and age, or actually throughout the days and ages, to be a servant or a slave is, is not something that we, we look at quite highly, is it? It's got a very negative connotation. And I guess it is because a master is always seen as somebody oppressive, somebody cruel, somebody dominant, mm -hmm. you know, very negative. However, in this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to focus mostly on who our master is. And then the relationship that comes out of that is going to be very different from the kind of relationship we would envisage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And also it's a choice, right? When we look at who we want to serve, if we have to serve, uh, let's say if we are, you know, like the people who are taken and, and put on boats and forced to serve, will we, knowing Allah, well, Ideally, we should know Allah's status. Uh, we ha have to serve him, but also we choose to serve him. And that's a little bit of a, you know, I, I think no one, we all accept that we are not in control of ourselves in our lives. But sometimes we forget this and we think we are. But here the Prophet not only knows and understands that, but wants to be the Abd of Allah, which like you yeah. said, if you're serving someone like Allah, and that is the biggest honor of all and that is the biggest pride of all Absolutely. so what comes to my mind immediately is a, is a relationship based on love yes and it's not based on superiority and you know it is of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is superior but you know his quality of rahman and rahim is the, is manifest the most mm. and so then the relationship that comes is not one of you know um just, you know, thinking very negatively, thinking the worst is going to come from the master. It's not that sort of relationship at all, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. then going back to the Holy Prophet, yeah. the fact that Abd is mentioned before Rasul, so the Holy Prophet, you know, he's a servant and a, and a slave of Allah first, and then it suggests that, you know, for him to be the kind of messenger he is, that carry the lofty message, you know, the, the mission that he has, he had to be the, you know, the, 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 a, an abd in a complete sense yeah. for him to then be able to convey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message and to carry out his mission. Yeah, because yeah. that's the way we, in, in particular, Shiaism differs, right? We think that his whole life was just living out Allah's commands. Yeah. Therefore, we take his whole life as an example, not just what he said when he was revealing the Quran, but in his entire life. And if, we, if he wasn't an abd, then yeah. how would we know that this is what Allah wants us to do? How would he be the ideal role model for us, you know? We wouldn't have that guarantee or we wouldn't have the assurance that everything that he is doing is right. Yeah. We know he is because he was in complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so everything that he said and did was from Allah. Yeah. Yeah, that was very, very interesting, wasn't it? And even in our salah, if we think about mm -hmm. it, we... We say this every time in Tashahud, right? We say, So nine times a day, we are uh, testifying that the Prophet Muhammad was the Abd of Allah. And, you know, again, that's over the fact that he was the Rasul. So yeah. this is a very, very important con uh, like concept for us to understand. Mm -hmm. And then I guess, you know, 
going back to earlier threads, we then have to ask ourselves, right? Like, if our ideal role model, the Prophet, was a complete Abd of Allah, are we, or are we choosing to follow our own egos? Are we questioning Allah's commands? Are we, you know? So the thing that comes to mind most is, are we obeying Allah's commands as an Abd? So if we want to practically emulate the Holy Prophet, we have to be Abd of Allah as well. So are we obeying his commands, his orders, what he's asking us to do? And this other thing that I think is massive is, are we trusting him in our lives? Yeah. You know, if he is our master, then whatever he deems right for us, yeah. are we happy with that? And are we trusting that or not? So I think those are the two practical aspects there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, going back to that point about we are all, whether we like it or not, Abd of Allah's, like his mm -hmm. creation, we're completely under his command, mm -hmm. but we still have that free will, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. in that choosing, and you said that I, that relationship based on love, mm -hmm. and you know the hadith where if you're choosing to follow out of, you know, fear of the punishment, then, yes. you know, that's the lowest level. But if you're choosing to follow uh, because of the promise of reward, that's middle level. But if you're choosing to follow because you know Allah is deserving and he, he, he is the one that we should be following and we love to please him, then that's the highest level. And our relationship with our parents comes to mind here as well, right? When we are telling our kids to do something, they can maybe, you know, do it, but do it resentfully or do it knowing that we are wanting the best for them and this is out of our experience or wisdom and sometimes if that they choose to do it like that that has the most impact and meaning doesn't it yeah well it comes down to the unconditional love and the belief in that love and you know respecting that yeah, absolutely yeah that was very interesting part yeah and even when we talk about our salah mm. you know the uh, going back to when we were doing ya ali ya Aleen, and the fact that when we are saying that allah is the most high we are at our lowest is this like that significant symbol of us being the ab and Allah being the master as well. Definitely. Isn't it? Yeah. So Jew, definitely the Suju is, is a complete, you know, visual description of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. I guess that's why when, you know, the early Meccans found it so, so difficult to bow down so low, mm. you know, because their egos would not allow that. I mean, to be honest, to be an abd of Allah is to crush your own ego, to crush that highness that, you know, we want to hold on to so much. Mm -hmm. okay. well, moving on to the next question that we're going to look at a little bit more is the third one, where mm -hmm. it says, read lines 134 to 141. Why do you think it is so highly recommended to send salawat on the Holy Prophet? And can you find this in the Quran too? Mm -hmm. Now, we've already looked at salawat in an earlier dua, but when we were reading through this, we found that this had a very unique characteristic, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we thought we would look at this a little bit more because this salawat has been qualified. Mm -hmm. um, so when we ask Allah to send blessings, remember we said it was a dua, that we're, we're sending blessings and peace upon uh, the Prophet. But here's the type of uh, blessings that we're asking for. We're saying with the most superior, best, beautiful, perfect, purest, prosperous, pleasant, purified, and sublime blessing. Yeah. The most that you have ever blessed, showered, had mercy and compassion on, and greeted anyone from your servants, your prophets, your messengers, your chosen ones, and the honorable ones from your creation. That's, that's a lot of adjectives. That's a lot of, and a lot of superlative adjectives. It's all the <laughs> most, it's the highest, it's the best, it's the sublime. So, you know, that just shows us that the Prophet's status is just above every single person else. You know, it's, it's the highest station that you can have. Yeah. And that really came through here, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that the salawat is salawat that is continuous, we were saying. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, salawat, like we said before, is a dua, but this salawat is something that, um, it, you know, we are, we, are, we are supplicating to Allah to then send his blessings on the Holy Prophet, but it's not something that's happening at that time only. It is something that is continuous. Yeah. And we found a reference of that in Ziyarat Ashura, didn't we? Yeah. عَلَيْكَ مِنِّي سَلَامُ اللَّهِ أَبَدًا مَا بَقِيتُ وَبَقِيَ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارِ So be with you from me, the peace of Allah, as long as I live, and even if I'm not alive, as long as there is day and night. 
So I think what, what the tafsirs of this dua have actually spoken about this salawat as being um, and be able to increase and expand. It's not just that it's like, like we said before, it's static, but actually it grows and it um, becomes better and better. And when, and when we think about back to the fact that it's a dua, what better dua than this, right? That we're sending these blessings that are so amazing, but that grow and expand as well. You know, Shaina, you're going back to the benefits of salawat, then it kind of makes sense that the salawat is the weightiest thing that is on your scale because yeah. it is something that is growing and something that is continuous. It's not moment, momentary, you know, it's not something we do after we hear the name of the Prophet and then that, that the is done, then it stops. No, it just continues. And I guess it adds to our, our scale that way. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's constantly, even when we have moved on, it's still yeah. having its impact in the universe. Absolutely. Right, right, right. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And then the reference to the salawat in the Holy Quran, we were saying in that question. Yeah. That's um, Surah Al Ahzab, Ayah 56, where it's in the Quran, it says, Indeed, Allah and his angels shower his blessings upon the Prophet. O oh, you who believe, send blessings on him and salute him with a worthy salutation. Mm -hmm. So it's something, you know, that just um, like it, what we were saying that it's that Allah is actually sending it, you know, so we are, it's a dua that we are we are reciting and then Allah is then sending his blessings on the Holy Prophet and his family. Yeah. And Allah is our medium, right? I think yeah. we know that yeah. that's what we also need to. It's a prayer that we're asking, not that we can do it, but we're asking Allah mm -hmm. to do it. So True. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this session. I hope you found it as interesting as we did, inshallah. Um, do do the activity. There are some salawats to listen to, and it just there's a lot of beautiful salawats out there. It doesn't have to be Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. It is a very it can be beautiful and different tunes. So have a listen, inshallah. All right, take care and see you next time, inshallah.